A couple of months ago I reported that the Red Hat++ project, so the Arduino and DCC++ X based command station, is almost ready to go. And despite all the other stuff going on, I was able to get it running, but then decided to drop the project. Well, in this video I will tell you why, and even more important, what exciting new device is going to replace it. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. To explain my decision for dropping the Red Hat project, let's quickly review the history of it. It started with video number 79, where I explained how to build a Loconet command station using a modular approach and existing components. The core functions as identified in that video are user data input, the management of locomotives, turnouts and signals, the generation of the DCC signal and boosting up that signal so it has enough energy to power the locomotives on the track. Most of these modules were already available and all I did was combining them together. The only new element was a Loconet slot manager, which is a piece of software I implemented on the IoT T-Stick that keeps track of the locomotives that are assigned to a throttle and makes sure they are properly addressed and refreshed by the DCC sect signal generator. I had quite some positive feedback on that video and several viewers were replicating the setup. Of course, one of the problems you see when looking at it is the amount of wiring between the individual components, which is not very user friendly. So I thought, let's make a PCB to combine these modules into one single board. That's what I introduced in video number 85 and it was working. The board had its own Arduino microcontroller on it running a slightly modified version of the DCC++ X software. Then it had the Loconet interface, an interface to the IoT stick and an IBT2 booster module, so all the modules identified before, but in a much cleaner arrangement. Plus I added some more peripheral elements like 32 input buttons and support for an LED chain like the one on the blue hat. I then kept working on the software and did a second revision of the board and I, I felt pretty good about it as documented in video number 89. At the time all the major functions were working. I had modified the DCC++ X software to support the extra peripheral functions that became possible by making a specific board and are not possible to do the same way on the original Arduino hardware. I also finalized the programming track functionality, slot manager functions like setting up locomotive consists and others, which all was working nicely. But I ended up spending more time than expected to make modifications to the already very good DCC++ X software just to deal with the additional functions of my board. And that made me think. Is that really what I want? Maintaining the software of the IoT stick consumes already a significant amount of my available time. Do I really want to add a second major software package I have to maintain? On top of it a package that I would only modify, therefore depending on the release cycles of the DCC++ X developers. I mean, I had a lot of fun getting it going initially, but overall this concept is not really sustainable. Furthermore, I started to have some doubts about the hardware concept as well. In order to come up with a single board solution, I made some choices not every user might like. For example, the use of the IBT2 power driver. It is a great device and offers plenty of power, which is particularly useful for larger scales. But the reality is that most of the DCC++ X users probably simply use a motor shield with 2 or so amps output current and are happy with it. Why should I force them to use something they are not looking for? 
it dawned on me that I was neglecting my own advice of using modularity as promoted in the original video, for the sake of being the proud developer of a fully functional command station. So I decided to drop the project and start over, this time with the user in mind. At the core, this came down to reducing the number of modules I am putting on my own board. Knowing that there is quite a large number of DCC++ X users who all have successfully implemented their own setup with an Arduino and a power booster of their choice, I skipped those two modules from my board and kept the others, a connection to the Loconet network to control throttles and the Loconet slot manager functionality running in the IoT T-Stick. That left me with a very simple two-wire interface to the Arduino and made it possible to bring it into the form factor of a typical Arduino shield, hence the new name Red Hat++ Shield. Let me show you how the complete system works. The base is an Arduino controller with the DCC++ X software loaded on it. For those who do not know, DCC++ X is becoming the de facto standard for do-it-yourself DCC command stations, as it runs on inexpensive hardware and is extremely well documented and supported. Installation, which tends to be a hurdle for newbies to the world of microcontrollers, is made as simple as could be. It comes down to downloading and running an installer from your PC and that's it. The second element is the power driver. To keep the form factor you can choose from several so-called motor shields that have the same pinout as the Arduino and can simply be clicked on. On the other hand, if you want to use something more powerful like the IBT2, that is supported as well, but you have to take care of the additional wiring. Third, the Red Hat++ shield is added on the top of the stack and an IoT stick connected to the head connector. A short growth port cable is used to connect the IoT stick to the growth port connector on the lower side of the Red Hat++ shield. This is for the Loconet communication and two short wires connect to the DCC output of the motor shield so that the board knows when DCC is on. And voila, your Loconet compatible DCC command station is ready. You can power it up, select a locomotive and start playing. I think the advantages of this new concept for the user are obvious. But there are also some disadvantages, so here is a quick comparison of the two solutions. As you see, the main functionality I had to skip is the 32 digital input buttons I had on the Red Hat++ board. Some of you were waiting for this feature and skipping it might be a disappointment for you, I know. On the other hand, the DCC++ X software includes a pretty strong concept for adding various types of input and output hardware and the Red Hat++ shield is making them available to Loconet, so I think the loss of the buttons is not a showstopper and easily outweighed by the overall advantages that come with the new concept. The other major functionality that can not be supported by the shield concept is using it as a booster. The shield can only support command station mode as acting as a booster would require modifications to the DCC++ X side of things and possibly to the Arduino and power driver hardware, so it is out of reach. I always thought the booster was a nice feature to have, but then there are plenty of boosters that are commercially available, so why making another one? The RGB LED chain on the other hand is still part of the Red Hat++ shield and can be used for signals, CTC panels, power status LEDs and so on. Regarding connectivity, the Red Hat++ and the Red Hat++ shield are identical as that part is handled by the IoT stick. 
So there are two low connect connectors, both of them with the low power DCC signal on pins 1 and 6, so they can be used to power throttles and drive additional boosters. So if you have a DCC++ system working and a few low connect components like throttles or feedback modules sitting around idle, you now can connect them as to any other Loconet network. Of course you can also connect a computer using devices like the Locobuffer or other computer interfaces. Furthermore, the IoT stick can be connected to an existing Wi-Fi or act as access point on its own. Via Wi-Fi it provides a Loconet over TCP server and will also have a wise throttle server in the future, so you can easily connect smartphone throttles or JMRI software without an additional Wi-Fi shield on the Arduino. So what is the timeline of this new project? When can you expect something becoming available? Well, the hardware is working and almost final. There is one more status LED I want to add, as well as a current limiter for the low power DCC signal. And I am thinking about some changes to the power supply of the module, so that it has enough juice to also power the Arduino board, which simplifies the wiring for the user. So I think it will take about two months until the board is finalized and will be added to the Tindy store. Of course, as always, I will also publish the final design so that you can build your own board if you prefer. On the software side, there is also still some work to do. For the purple hat, as you might know, I have implemented a Vice Throttle client, so I can build on that to program the server part. And there remains some work to do for communicating changes made on the DCC++ X side, for example activating an input pin or changing the speed of a locomotive, over to Loconet. The Loconet slot manager and other components are the same as on the previous Red Hat version. Interesting to note as well that I had some discussions with the friendly people from the DCC++ X project. It started a few months ago, but now as I started to work on the shield concept, became more interesting for me and I guess for them as well. As conclusion of our most recent talk, we sort of join forces to work on extending the use of DCC++ X using Loconet as communication network, so that the user has the choice of integrating a lot of Loconet devices from various manufacturers along with DCC++ X. As a result, there is now a Loconet discussion group for developers on the DCC++ X Discord server, and the discussion has been quite intense the last few days since it was established. So, things are moving in various aspects, and I am confident that the first release of the Red Hat++ Shield software should be available at the same time like the finalized hardware, but then of course there will be periodic updates to the software as always, along with some videos showing how to configure and use it, and if you don't want to miss out on that, Please subscribe to the IOTT channel and hit the bell icon, so that you have a premium seat when new videos come out. And that's it for today. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you now have a first idea how the new Red Hat++ Shield can help to expand your DCC++ X installation into a Loconet based command station. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to keep me happy and motivated and it also helps to promote this video and others on the IOTT channel to even more model railroaders. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.